Episode 68, Give Me a Free Meal. Lisa had already walked up to the hostess. Miss, please arrange a seat for us. My friends and I have been waiting for a few minutes, she said in a very proper tone. I'm sorry, please wait in line. When it's your turn, we'll arrange a table for you, the hostess said politely. What? I need a place right now, don't you know me? Let me tell you that I'm someone you can't afford to offend. If you don't arrange a place for me as soon as possible, I can tell you very clearly that you might lose your job," Lisa said aggressively. She felt that it was beneath her that a hostess could refuse her request. Ma'am, I hope you can follow our rules," said the hostess with a smile and continued. We really don't have a seat right now. If you want to eat here, you need to line up first. We'll arrange a table for you. I want to talk to your manager. I want to see if he can find a seat for me," Lisa said adamantly. She thought that the hostess definitely hadn't seen them the other day, so it would be useless for her to explain everything. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Our manager has his own matters to attend to. If you have anything to say, just say it to me, said the hostess. This middle-aged woman is obviously looking for trouble. If she thinks she can bully her way in, she'll be turned away, thought the hostess. You're such a naive little girl, Lisa choked with anger. She really couldn't handle this woman and looked at her worriedly. As you can see, we've come here with a friend. If today's meal is ruined, our family will lose $150,000 to $300,000. Lisa admitted bitterly to increase the importance of this meal and pressure the hostess. Can you make room for me now? When our business is done, I'll give you a big tip of $100. As you can see, all the tables are already occupied. There is only one supreme room left, but it's too expensive. The minimum price is $8,000, so I'm sure you won't want it. I really have no choice, the hostess said awkwardly. A supreme room is empty? Why didn't you tell me earlier? Lisa said in high spirits. The last time they'd eaten in that room, their meal had been free. Since they'd been able to eat for free in a supreme room, why shouldn't they eat there again? Are you sure you want to eat in a supreme room? The reason why a supreme room was still available was that it cost so much. Lisa didn't look like someone who could afford to eat there, no matter how well dressed she was. What are you saying? It's not like we've never eaten in a supreme room before. Do you think we'll go back on our word or something? Lisa said with dissatisfaction. Hearing how confident she was, the hostess didn't dare to say anything else and ordered someone to bring Lisa and the others to the room. Lisa, what's the minimum order for a supreme room? Is it really all right? Joanne asked Lisa in a low voice. Although Lisa had ordered the room, Joanne was still very nervous. Joanne, don't worry, I'll treat you. Your mission today is to eat and enjoy yourself. Don't worry about anything else, Lisa said with a relaxed smile. The waiter led them to the room. Joanne was amazed by the luxurious decor inside. Seeing her expression, Lisa felt even more satisfied. We came here last week, let's order the same thing as last time, Lisa said to the waiter. Ah, but there are only four of you this time. If you order that much, you might not be able to eat it all, the waiter kindly said to them. If I tell you to go get this order, you do it. If we can't finish, we'll have leftovers. You worry a lot, Lisa said with a great deal of anxiety. Only then did the waiter leave. You're too generous, Joanne said in defeat. Seeing that Lisa had so much confidence and that she had indeed eaten in a supreme room before, Joanne felt more at ease. Hey, look at what you're saying. You're not used to being here. When you come a few more times, you'll know that it's just like that here, Lisa said modestly but her heart was already beating fast. Very soon, one delicacy after another was brought to the table. Hurry and try it all, Joanne. The cuisine here is the most authentic. The oysters are pretty good, Lisa said with a look of understanding. In reality, how could she know whether the cuisine was good or not? At that moment, the door to the room was pushed open, and a young man walked in with a smile. It was Manager Hood. Those who were able to order a supreme room were all esteemed guests, so whenever there was someone eating in there, he would personally come to offer them a toast. Hello, everyone, 
Manager Hood was stunned when he saw that the perverted ladies, including Lisa, had returned. How could it be them? Manager Hood couldn't help but feel angry. When Lisa and her sisters saw the manager, they were overjoyed, and a perverted expression appeared on their faces. Is the food delicious? I'll make a toast. If you need anything, feel free to tell me. Manager Hood said as he picked up a glass of beer from the table. He just wanted to finish the toast and leave. Looking at these ladies, he felt disgusted. Manager Hood, wait a minute. The wine isn't very good. Since you want to toast us, you have to bring some decent wine. Let's have some of that Louis XIV from last time, Lisa said, looking at him meaningfully. Okay, I'll go and get it now, Manager Hood said politely. He turned around and walked out of the room. Staying in there for too long was a mental blow for him. This manager is really handsome, Joanne couldn't help but whisper. Joanne, you like him too. As long as you're sincere, I can make him accompany you for two days. Lisa smiled mysteriously at Joanne as she raised her eyebrows. Are you joking? He's such a big manager, why would he listen to you? Joanne's heart was quite moved. She felt a little scared, as this was also a test for Lisa. You won't believe it. I'll let you see if he listens to me or not later on, Lisa said proudly. By the way, Joanne, if I can really get the manager to accompany you for two days, then what about our partnership? Oh, sure. My husband listens to me a lot, Joanne said with a coy smile. At this moment, Manager Hood walked in with a bottle of Louis XIV. He opened it and poured some for everyone. He walked up to Lisa and toasted her. Manager Hood, you drink so quickly. Look, a drop of wine spilled on your shirt. Come, let me wipe it for you, said Lisa. She playfully wanted to put her hand on his chest. I can do it myself. The manager took a step back and wiped himself. This wine is really strong. I'm dizzy. Lisa touched her forehead and fell toward him. She wanted to fall into his arms, but he quickly dodged her. Lisa stumbled and almost bumped into the table. Your reaction was pretty fast. I didn't manage to kill you, she thought. The manager pretended that nothing had happened as he smiled at Lisa and clinked wine glasses with the others. They all wanted to take advantage of him, but he didn't let them succeed. Manager Hood said a few polite words and then left. Um, don't worry, Joanne. I'll definitely get him to accompany you for two days, Lisa said, smiling awkwardly. Seeing Joanne's ugly expression, she was embarrassed. She thought it was probably because Darren wasn't there that day. So the manager didn't want them to take advantage of her generosity. Joanne didn't really take this matter to heart. The cuisine there was indeed pretty good, so she ate happily. After they ate and drank their fill, Lisa walked next to Joanne as they went to leave. When they reached the main entrance, the waiter caught up with them from behind. I'm sorry, but your bill has not been settled yet. Please settle your bill first before leaving, he said politely as he stood in front of Lisa and the others. Lisa's face turned red. The waiter wanted to settle the bill with her in front of Joanne. Wasn't this deliberately making her lose face? Are you new? Do I need to spend money here? I'll go back and ask Manager Hood, Lisa said as she felt that there was nothing wrong with what she had done. She almost scared the waiter with her words. Luckily, the manager walked over, asked the waiter something, and then looked at Lisa's calm expression. Manager Hood really wanted to slap Lisa on the face because of her words. Please settle your bill, Manager Hood said with a serious expression. Lisa, th this... Joanne looked at Lisa with worry. Didn't you say you didn't need to pay for the meal? What's going on now? Thought Joanne. Don't worry, Lisa comforted her. No one knew where she found her confidence, but she looked at the manager and said, Manager Hood, did you forget? Didn't you give us a free meal the last time we came here? Yes, but there was a reason for that exemption. I'm sorry, please settle the bill first, he said again while staring at Lisa. As he carefully thought about their last visit, it seemed that Alex had only talked to Debbie and her mother while they ate, and he had ignored everyone else. With his many years of experience in understanding people, 
Manager Hood was sure that Lisa and her group didn't have much to do with Alex. If it was Debbie and her mother coming to eat that day, Manager Hood would definitely let them leave without paying. But Lisa and the others were just ordinary people, so how could he let them eat in a supreme room for nothing? What's the matter with Manager Hood today? Didn't you treat us so well because of Darren the last time? Lisa thought. Okay, Manager Hood, I didn't expect you to be so unreasonable. I'll phone him right now. What do you want me to say to him? Lisa glared at the manager, took out her phone, and stepped aside to make the call. Just you wait. It's clearly a small matter, yet you insist on getting into trouble. I want to see how you're going to explain it all to him when he comes, Lisa said coldly to the manager after she hung up. Don't worry, Joanne. When he arrives, everything will be sorted out. We just ate at this place. If we make them look bad, they won't be happy. We'll just have to wait and see, Lisa said. Oh, that's good. Joanne's heart calmed down when she saw that Lisa and the others were so undisturbed. But Manager Hood's heart was beating really hard. Could it be that she was calling Alex just now? Did I make a mistake? Is this woman really related to Alex? He thought. He was nervously waiting for this person to arrive. He had made up his mind that if it really was Alex, he would apologize to them. It didn't matter if he lost face, as it was still better than offending Alex. A young man walked in through the door. Lisa hurried over and greeted him. Darren, you're finally here. If you hadn't come, this would have killed me.